Hey everybody, Awesome at G here, and today we have another novel idea video, and we're going to be reviewing 14 by Peter Kleins. And just like with um, uh, the previous novel, the we're going to be. Thank you. The fold. <laughs> we're joined by uh, Capricious. Hi. <laughs> you already butted in. I know. <laughs> and uh, and Lucid Burrito. Hello. So again, just uh, a heads up: if you haven't read the book, or if you're you don't want any spoilers or anything, you probably ought to stop it now because we're going to ruin the entirety of the novel, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're considering reading it, we recommend go read it because it's a very good book. Oh yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So, what'd you guys think? I loved it. I was I was super excited to read it. Uh, Cappy read it first, you know. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in uh, the fold, and uh, so I read it, and it was awesome. I think I liked it more than uh, the fold, actually. Yeah. yeah. I oh, <laughs> I thought you were gonna have. You said, "What do you guys think about it?" I thought it was my turn. Go. <laughs> you wait. Okay. Uh, I agree. I really, really enjoyed it. I, I feel like I, it's hard for me to choose between the fold and this, but it. They're definitely both amazing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I know. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it's it's. I'm I'm in the same ballpark as as you, uh, Cappy. I'm. I love both the fold and fourteen, and. Uh, I'm I'm unsure which one I prefer over the other, because they're while they're, they have very similar genres and they're somewhat connected. Mm -hmm. Um, they have a very different feel to it, you know, because 14 is just like some dude that just moves into his apartment and he's all like, do 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 going about his life. I think that what I like probably more about 14, which makes sense because I think it was the first one written, is that it, um, gives so much more backstory and more information than The Fold. So you really get to learn... The elements in the fold that are just kind of assumed you maybe already know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's another reason why I liked it a lot compared to the fold is just because I'm just going to repeat what you said. <laughs> it's okay. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> it's it's like, you know, the, the, when you're reading the fold, there's a lot of the stuff that's just referred to as yeah. opposed to explained. Yeah. It glosses over a lot, assuming that you read 14 first. Yeah, and I, I know Peter Klein says they're not, like, direct sequels of each other, because they're not. Right. But the stories are certainly connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it was so good. In, I, in video, I, we're done. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, right? I just, I really, I'm, I'm sitting here going, ah, oh, because I don't know if y'all saw this. A while back, I don't think Cappy did, but Lucid might have. I follow Peter Kleins on Twitter, and uh, like a month ago, he was tweeting a couple of times about having meetings with Hollywood executives and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my god, I hope they make a show out of this. Uh, he did tweet that it was possible, but yeah, uh, yeah. like I don't, it's you know, it's not solid concrete yet. Yeah, but super exciting. Totally. So, what were some of y'all's favorite, like, I don't know, scenes or, or information? Like, oh. I, I can't really say all of this stuff is like scenes in a book, you know? Because a lot of right. it just feels like it's it's information obtained where you're like, oh my god, that's so, like, mind-blowing. Yeah, my my favorite, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> oh, I was is, gonna let you. <laughs> <laughs> is um, when they go, like, this is way into the book already. But uh, when they go into the, uh, when they go down to find out what's at the bottom of the, the tunnels, oh. and they go into the, the thermal, geothermal plant area, I was just, it was awesome. I was, that was super awesome. Oh, me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite part was when he was peeling the paint off of the walls, and you realized that this, there was so much more underneath than you could have ever realized, and it really starts for me piquing my interest of, okay, what's what's going on here? This is crazy. Yeah. What was your favorite part? 
My, mine was somewhat related to the wall peeling thing, but it was when they started realizing that the lights in Nate's room, the, the fact that it turned every light bulb into a black light actually affected what he could and could not see behind the paint on the walls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, because they were all like, oh, it's just this little thing right here on your wall. And then they started realizing, no, actually, if you use black light, there's like everything lights up. There's yeah. just stuff everywhere. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, mind equals blown. Just push. But yeah, there were so many, there were so many scenes like that. Like, again, like the one where you were talking about where they were going through the tunnels and then they get to the bottom and you realize they're actually siphoning the, the heat energy from the fault line like miles underground to power yeah. the building and i was just like holy shit that's amazing yeah and then they're like but faults are miles underground they're like yeah we're estimating we're like three miles under <laughs> they're like oh well yeah i guess that works what what really blew my mind about the part especially the fault lines is, is they were talking about there were pipes like big pipes that went down into the fault and it goes even farther down like how how did did i mean that's a lot of effort I don't know if they're assembling pipes and just stuffing them down the hole. It was just that that whole area was just it was awesome to me. Yeah. And I mean that the the, the literal sense of awesome. It was like a gen it it was like an engineering marvel. Yeah. Just the the concept that they were able to create something like that was just nuts. Yeah, and this is a and this is a time they didn't really know what the building was doing. So, and and their heads are like, why do we have all of this to power our our heaters and our TVs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it still feels kind of mind blowing. It, it still feels like again, like you said, epic, but in the actual sense of the word, of like. The scale that everything was going on is it's hard to take in it's it's hard to wrap your mind around it mm -hmm. yeah uh, well, probably oh sorry go ahead I was just gonna say also the whole the whole concept that this building was just it it wasn't really a building it was a machine mm -hmm. created to like stave off the the apocalypse yeah. And they just decided, you know, well, we can't just let anybody know that this machine is here, so let's just put random apartments in here and let people live. <laughs> we feel like it's free space. You can just put, <laughs> put, just put some sheetrock up and it's good to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, what were you going to say a second ago, Lucy? Uh, uh, probably a less uh, mind-blowing but still equally impressive part was when uh, they revealed Debbie and Clive's uh, apartment. Being this big two-story chandelier, wood-paneled, super nice apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it turns out to be this like super intricate control room with like millions of knobs and switches. Yeah, that was very cool. Yeah, that's like when when Cappy tried to explain it to me at first. Like she was, we I had read the fold and I was like, I love this, I love this novel. And then she was all like, Well, fourteen is kind of similar, you know, the the whole thing is neat. But she had. She had kind of given me a hint as to what was kind of going on. She's like, it's very steampunk. Mm -hmm. And so when they described that room, I was I was imagining all like these old fashioned, like, you know, those doors that they would have in like old movies where the door has this intricate locking mechanism. But in the center of it, there's this little like four inch wheel. It's a really mm -hmm. small wheel. Mm -hmm. But I, I pictured like a whole bunch of those and some of those big old timey like uh, I always describe them as like the Frankenstein switches. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and you know all kinds of stuff like that, just scattered all over the walls in their apartment. And I was just like, oh my god, could you imagine? <laughs> that, that would be super. That'd be. I, I just. I, I'm trying to you know imagine what they were like. Well, 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 you know, if that happened, you'd be like, oh my god, what are we supposed to do with all this? And then when you know. Uh, skipping ahead a bit to where they're trying to fix all these switches that would just that feels like it'd be like just an incredibly daunting task well yeah especially since they're doing it with you know the whole um 
alpha predators breathing down their backs trying to come through the newly opened gateway. Yeah. And they're like, put everything back the way it was. And there's so many switches and buttons that were in certain positions. And I, I'd probably just lay down in the corner and cry and accept my fate. All right. Yeah, just like, oh, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Bye. <laughs> yeah, and it's fucking... When they first expose all those switches and Roger just kind of like goes over and he's all like, flip. <laughs> 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 It's like, what the hell are you doing? I didn't do nothing, bro. <laughs> I just flipped this one switch. <laughs> and then fucking, like, the sun goes out. Like, that was, okay, that was one part that, like, blew my mind when, because I was, I was, like, driving to work one day listening to the audiobook. <laughs> and I'm, I'm driving down the street, and they're describing that whole room and the scene and Roger flipping the switch. And then they, they start freaking out because there's a work earthquake going on. And then they flip the switch back, and then Nate comments, nobody else saw the sun go out. And I was like, oh, holy shit! And I was like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? And then I got to work. And I was like, damn it, I want to keep reading! <laughs> I'm going to be late after to drive around the block. <laughs> yeah! I was just like, I don't want to stop, this is so good. Yeah, well, I was definitely pretty much non-stop, just keep going through it. Yeah. Like the the one thing I didn't quite understand was, and they don't really understand either, and that's I think that's the whole point of this, not necessarily this novel, but this particular room is the whole concept that 14 goes into the, the apartment number 14. When they open the door, it goes into outer space in another part of a galaxy that looks upon an alien star, and they go through that whole scene, and then they close the door, and everybody's like, why does this room go to outer space? And then that's never explained. <laughs> it's well, like, it's this counterbalance to the building. Yeah, but to what? <laughs> well, I think it's because at that point in the book, or even throughout the whole book, they still don't know yeah. what a lot of the room does. Like, why don't compasses work? Uh, why do people sleep so good here? Yeah, th these are all things that still aren't explained by the end yeah. of the novel. And so it's... Th that's a lot of stuff that can be expanded on in like future stories about yeah. this. That's yeah. why I really hope he writes another book about this. Is I was like, I want to know where it goes. <laughs> I'd like another uh, adventure of uh, Shaggy and the gang before they before the fold happens. There a little in between there. Yeah, because there's I don't know how much time passes between the end of 14 and quote unquote the end of the fold but right. there's obviously some kind of time lapse between the two because at the end of the fold when they show up and they're all like yeah we've seen this a couple of times already you're all yeah. like a couple of times <laughs> well, where else have you done this what else has happened that we've missed out on that's going to be super exciting you know yeah and by then they seem so calm and nonchalant about it and that's definitely not that took time because at the end of 14 they're still reeling so yeah that would be interesting to have an in-between book to explore more and get more information yeah setting up the whole um you know we're the hellboy style group of people that go around and investigate paranormal stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah uh Going a little off topic, one of the things that bothered me a little bit is when Nate first moves to that apartment, he meets the guy that's moving out. And uh, he said that the apartment gave him a weird vibe, you know, like he didn't like the place. But everyone, out, and everyone else liked the apartment. They all slept well, no problems, loved it. But that one guy didn't. That's a good point. I, that never dawned on me because that's so early in the book. Yeah. The guy's like, nah, man, this place just feels really weird. Yeah. And I then he gets... And then he gets there, and everybody's all like, yeah, this place is great. Yeah. And I can't remember which apartment he's in, but I don't think it's the one that everyone was dying in. Which one? The one Nate was in, or the one the no. guy that was moving out was in? Yeah, the, the one that got the guy that was moving out. Oh, I don't know. And it couldn't have been that apartment, because they said they quit uh, renting it out to people after the last person killed himself in there. That's true. Right. So yeah, what was his deal? Was he like super evil and the building wards off terrible people? 
Then why didn't it ward off Andrew? Exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. God, that well, guy... how did how did he even make it in? Because they talk about um, block management does this whole screening process because Nate even talks about that no one chooses to move there. They're all recommended to move there by someone else. Yeah, that's a good point. This must have been like a... And they mentioned that Andrew has lived there for a long time. Yeah. Like, he's not... I don't think he's the oldest tenant there because obviously Mrs. Knight was way before him, but... You know, he's he's at least lived there for a couple of years, I felt. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've developed a theory just now. <laughs> okay. So, the family knows that that building is important, right? Because they, mm -hmm. they found uh, Kodoro and they chased him there, but they didn't, couldn't figure out anything. So, when the building was being rented out, they made sure to have someone living there all the time, hoping to figure something out. So, it just kept passing from one member of the family to another, possibly. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. You'd have someone on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, you also, I mean, with Roger, he was so religious that people just kind of were like, ah, just leave him alone, and no one bothered him or really talked to him or tried to get to know him. Andrew. So you, Andrew. Oh, I, who did I say? Roger. Roger. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at my paper, and I said Roger. With Andrew, they, no one ever questioned him. Um, so he really could kind of fly under the radar. Mm -hmm. at, at first, I just thought Andrew was like the the stereotypical, you know, your your nearby neighbor, creepy, overly religious guy who's super yeah. uptight about everything. Yeah. And then at a, I forgot what point it was during the story where you actually started to feel kind of bad for the guy. You're like, you know, he he gets a bad rap just because of his beliefs, and you're like, oh well, I kind of feel bad for the dude. I'm glad he's getting involved in Scooby and the gang and. Yeah. You know, it's he's still a little awkward, but he's not like super off putting now. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's trying. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's trying. And then like two chapters later he's all like, I'm a dick <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so he when when the author wrote that character, he wrote it really well because you start hating the guy because you're just like, Oh my god, it's one of these people. Yeah. And we we all know that person, so it's it's mm -hmm. easy to relate to uh, greatly disliking him. Yeah, and then at certain at some point, I forgot what it was. Obviously, you're going like, "Oh, well, the guy's trying." I think it's because he, he does it in a very kind of innocuous way, like, "Oh, God doesn't like that." And they're like, "Just don't pull that shit." And he's like, "Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just you know just letting you know." So he doesn't ever try to overstep his bounds and be too pushy with it. And then he brings, I mean, he brings snacks and stuff. I mean, they're not great to the he's meetings. Look at celery sticks. Yeah. And so I'm... he's trying and, and you feel bad because he's just so religious and you almost feel like his mind is warped by his religion and that he just can't help it. Which to be fair, it was. It, yeah. yeah, it really was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as one of my favorite characters in the whole book. I mean, I, I liked a lot of the characters. Pretty much all of them, but I loved Tim a lot. Oh, yeah. Tim was great. Tim was awesome. He's all like, uh, so you know how to pick locks, huh? Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote a book about it. I, I, I published, I published a book a about, book about it. <laughs> You're like, you publish a lot of books. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, a little bit of everything. <laughs> I felt kind of bad when he died, too. I yeah. Did, yeah, I didn't want him to die. I was disappointed with that, but I get it. I was a big fan of the way uh, Peter Klein's wrote his death, and that the whole time he's dying, Nate's having the uh, "if this were a movie, this would be happening" part, and Tim's just yeah. <laughs> it's like Nate's. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's all like he would he would lay there with the gun and he'd fight off like four or five more dudes and then he would end dramatically and he's all like just run but <laughs> he just dies. He says just run. I'll hold him off for as long as I can and then dies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> it's much more that that's one thing I really appreciate about a lot of the authors that I read now. Um now that I'm a little older, is that I, I prefer authors that make their characters and write their stories in a more realistic way. Mm -hmm. As opposed to being like, you know, and then magically he was healed. 
Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, eh. Lame. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I think Peter Kleins does a really good job with fleshing people out and really making them feel like this could be one of your friends you're chatting with and you you know even with Andrew where you're like you know that kind of person that's exactly how they act it's not too much it's not too little he just does a really good job with that mm -hmm. I agree <laughs> <laughs> you've been waiting for that haven't you <laughs> only a little so plus the uh the Another one of the things I found really cool was the whole, like, pseudo-flashback, but it wasn't really a flashback. It was just they started figuring out what had happened to Kodorovich mm. in the building about how he had gotten... They had found an article about how, you know, he had gotten stabbed, and then he ran back to the building, and they followed the blood, and I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. Did you like the uh, the Nikola Tesla... Oh, connection. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was all like, oh, they worked together with Tesla to build the building. I was like, oh my god, no way. <laughs> my my favorite part is when they're trying to they're figure trying to figure out what NNT could be, and uh, Debbie says something Nikola Tater Bottom or something. I was like, <laughs> Nikola Tesla, and she goes, oh, Nikola Tesla. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I had that same thing when they were like NT NT. I was all like. Oh, Holy shit, is it is it Tesla? <laughs> and then they connected it. I was like, oh my god, it is! Yeah! <laughs> Nerd boner. <laughs> now, I wonder, though, because I never even thought to look up this, is, is Kodorovic an actual person? We tried looking it up. Honestly, I don't think so. I think he might be based on someone, but I couldn't find... I couldn't find any reference to him except through the fold and 14. Maybe yeah. he's super obscure. I don't know. Now, one thing I will say is, because I, I did some research into this. <laughs> I did some research. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I, was, when I was doing the same thing of trying to Google if Kodorovich was a real person, uh, you know, at a certain point in the story, they're talking about how there's Kodorovich tesla and a third guy that put up the money and they comment that he had whipple. pardon whipple whipple yeah they comment that he had this this construction company that had built a dam and the dam had failed and so he hired a bunch of he uh he did a bunch of like money collecting so he could build another dam and he moved that money to build this build and all that stuff mm -hmm. i looked up that guy and he's real and he is the grandchild of um the HP Lovecraft. Yeah, yeah Lovecraft. Grandfather. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah he's yeah, the grandfather. Yeah. He's the grandfather. You're right. He's the grandfather of Lovecraft. And so I was all like, wow, this Peter Kleins did a lot of research into how to get all these people to connect and then just like threw in a fictitious character to help tie it all together a little yeah. easier. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, the, the accuracy for everything other than Kodorovich is surprisingly accurate. Yeah. That's I was cool. impressed. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, I even liked when they made the connection to H.P. Lovecraft in the in the novel. I'm getting goosebumps talking about that part. <laughs> because it is one of those, you keep having almost these mind-blowing moments. You, you see the faults, and you're like, oh, my God, that's how they're powering it. And then you learn about Nikola Tesla and then H.P. Lovecraft. And, like, suddenly you're thinking, okay, now you realize all the stuff H.P. Lovecraft wrote about with Cthulhu and all of that. That's the Alpha Predators. I mean, this is all stuff he probably heard from his grandfather and just, you know, wrote stories about it. And everyone's like, oh, that's cute. He's writing, you know, writing crazy science fiction. And you're like, holy crap, what if it's real? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not fictional. It's, um, like... Nonfiction? Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not exactly the word I was looking for. Well, I but don't think it's biographical no, necessarily, but it's, yeah. It's, it's like informational. It's like a warning type. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, this is these are these creatures. This is how they act. Mm -hmm. This is what they look like. Just so well, if this does happen, you know what's going on. You even said you did research on Cthulhu and H.P. Lovecraft and that the way that the Alpha Predators respond and react is very similar but didn't you say there was some element of like when you look upon them you go mad or something 
That, that was one of the things in the Lovecraftian books, and and I think I might like to go and try and find one of his, like, main books, Lovecraft's main books, that talks mm -hmm. about Cthulhu and read it, but he, he talks about the the elder gods, as he calls them. Um, if you look, at, if they look at you and you make eye contact with them, you just instantly go mad. Like, you go insane. Mm -hmm. Maybe and that's why all of the all of the people that were in that realm were so insane for the gods. Yeah, and well, that's that's the other reason why uh, when Nate talks about he would look at the god and then he would hear the voice in his head, mm -hmm. and they they would start like bleeding from their ears and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they mentioned that it was really really hard to look away. And mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think that's what it was, is maybe, maybe quote-unquote Lovecraft over-exaggerated how quickly the process takes place, but the, uh, the Alpha Predators do actually have an ability to eventually enthrall you. Yeah. Uh, it's, and it's relatively quick, but it's not instantaneous, you know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking, speaking of Alpha I guess they call them alpha predators, the elder gods. But uh, just when when Nate's locks eyes basically with the uh, the big one. Yep. And he pretty much gets pulled into it, and he's starting to just, uh, just. I don't know where I was going to go with that, but it was just a, a incredible. Just... The way it was described in the book. Yes. Mean? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the imagery. There you go. The imagery. Yeah. The, Peter Kleins is really good at at drawing a mental image in the yeah. reader's mind. I've never I've never read one of his uh one of his books and gone like, hey, I'm having a really hard time picturing what's going on here. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Anything he describes I can easily visualize it. Well and I like it too because it's not overly complicated descriptions. I mean it's super descriptive but also very like it's not like pages worth of description. It's yeah. It's pretty succinct and you got it and it's oh SAT words. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's he does such a good job with that. It's it's, it's a whale with bat wings and tentacles. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and, and tentacles out of his face. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I can see that. That are apparently miles long. Yeah. And just yanking people out of nowhere. <laughs> like when it grabbed uh, fucking Oscar oh. yeah. in, yeah, in the building and just like ripped him out through the roof and you were all like, oh my god. <laughs> which <laughs> like, sucked because of course then they would have needed him to fix the building because he knew what was going on. Yeah. I, it, I love the timing on it too because everyone's like, because it was just after they flew over so everyone's like getting their shit together and they're like, okay, cool, let's get this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost like the uh, it it rem I pictured it kind of like the scene from Deep Blue Sea, where Samuel L. Jackson gets eaten by the shark. <laughs> He's just standing there being all like la la la. I'm talking. <laughs> I think that's what the name of that movie was. Yeah, Possible. you're talking about where he gets his arm bitten off by the shark. I've seen that movie like twelve times because you know I watched bad movies over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Beer Fest is not a bad movie. No, it's amazing, no, and I love it. <laughs> That's not even being facetious. <gasps> Another SAT word. Uh, I just really like the movie. <laughs> I thought you were anyway. going to say I really like SAT words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do like those as well. Um, Gross. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's so many parts of this book that are just... Oh, it makes me want to go back and read it again just talking about it, mm -hmm. which I think says a lot because I don't often find that I'm eager to reread a book, um, yeah. especially yeah. after finishing and knowing exactly what's going to happen. Now, I, I will say when I... Cause I I'll, I'll eventually want to go reread it, but I'll find myself when I reread other novels just... Even knowing the end and how things progress, other things earlier in the story that I may not have caught mm -hmm. because they rely on you making connections at the end of the book mm -hmm. and going, oh yeah, remember on page two he said this? That's so much more impactful now, but you've totally forgotten what he said on page two. Yeah. Right. 
uh, speaking of that, that's a great segue. Uh, Oscar, uh, so his name is Oscar Rommel, and there that guy was like, oh, your na- last name's Rommel? And he's like, oh, yes, my name's Rommel. I'm related to the, was a German tank commander? I yeah. can't remember. And uh, so they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then when they were going through Oscar's room, they found a bunch of pictures of uh, his grandfather and his tank battalion and stuff. Oh, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll have to reread it and pay attention to that. And I'll actually want to read them in the order of 14 and then the fold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I, I read the fold first. And then, because I, I looked up and people were like, read the fold first. It's like way, way better. You don't have to read 14. And then when I was reading 14, I felt almost disappointed that I didn't read it first because it was so good. Yeah. And it really does set up the fold. Yeah. Yeah, I I think the one thing that uh, I I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like a uh, both a disappointment and not a disappointment at the same time. If you've read 14 first and then you start reading the fold, when they get to the point in the fold where they start talking about the green cockroaches, like immediately you would know what's going on. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You would be all like, okay, I know exactly what this is. Whereas when you read the fold first... You're at that point when they start talking about green cockroaches that have an extra leg. You're just like, oh, I have no, I have no yeah, idea what the hell this is. That's this crazy. Is, how did, yeah. how would those exist? That's true. I, I think I probably would have been disappointed that I would have known exactly where it was going. Yeah. Um, I, I liked the surprise of it being, you know, kind of interdimensional, apocalyptic, crazy. Yeah, because I thought it was. Well, that, that doesn't matter. That was part of the Folds review. I mentioned it in the review for the Folds. So. It's fine. It's hard yeah. not to talk about both because they're both so connected. Yeah. Uh, that did make uh, the 14 exciting for me. At least that part was when he mentions the roaches. Like, oh, we're going to find out what the roaches are doing. <laughs> yeah. And then, you, and then you just don't. Yeah. <laughs> and they just kind of gloss over that, too. Yeah, they just mentioned green roaches with extra legs, and they're weird. Did you Apparently notice they, they die just, if you take them outside? Yeah, yeah, they just show up when there's interdimensional travel going on. That's just where they are. I think, and I have, I just developed a new theory, by the way. <laughs> just, just now, right? Just now. <laughs> that because they're roaches and they're tiny and they get into things like roaches do, if there's any kind of interdimensional shenanigans, they just kind of slip into the cracks even though nothing's actually happening. They get yeah. into the cracks and they just kind of bleed through. They, they're your sort of first sign that something else going on and they would be able to fit through small cracks that nothing else would ever be able to seep through yeah yeah i think that may may be more along the lines of what he's doing with these green roaches is it's just the indicator mm-hmm. they don't mean anything themselves right. yeah they're just they're feelers yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, another thing, and I figured this out. My, this isn't like relevant to the story or anything, but uh, Zila, mm-hmm. her name is Alex backwards. Her name is Alexis. Mm-hmm. Ah. So I figured that out on my third read of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that at all. <laughs> and I'm, then like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it here on the paper that we've got, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, duh. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you guys are adorable. How could you not figure that out when she first said her name was Alexis? <laughs> it's, it seemed relevant. My brain was just like... It's, well, it's... okay. You know what? In my defense, I was reading the a Moby file. Oh, you, so re- you I had read it in text. Right, right. I was reading it in text. I wasn't just listening to it. And you guys did audiobooks. Yeah. So you're still adorable, but just in a different way now. I see how it is. SAT <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're so cute. They're so stupid. <laughs> no, I, I get it. I didn't think about that. It's the same feeling of when your dog goes running and like smashes his head into a bookshelf. You're just like, oh, you're so adorable. You're dumb. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel right now. I know how the dog feels. It's where you look at me and you go, oh, it's it's so good. You're pretty because because <laughs> you don't got a lot of else going on right now. <laughs> Well, is there anything else anybody else wanted to cover? Um, I don't want to cut it off and you'd be all like, wait, I wanted to talk about this one thing. I always have that, like, after we finished the fold, I was like, oh, there's so much other stuff I wanted to talk about, and then I forgot. Yeah. Because I don't take notes. 
But that's also what the comments are for. Yeah. Like, obviously, if anybody watching the video wants to comment or share their thoughts on the book, fucking put it yeah. down there, man. Absolutely. We'll, we'll chat about it. Yeah. I know we can pester Peter Klein. You can pester him on Twitter. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're so old now. <laughs> I'm gonna call it Twitter from now on. <laughs> I was trying to say tweet and Twitter at the same time. <laughs> no, you weren't. I, I you're just old. <laughs> Get on the facey books. <laughs> but yeah, hit him up and tell him to write another book about yeah. this. Yeah, I would read it. I would buy it in a heartbeat. Oh, absolutely. I, I would wait in line to buy it on release day. Yeah, it, this is such a interesting, intriguing world that has it has so much more potential and so much more that we still don't have explained. It would be amazing. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, before we go, I just thought of uh, what did you guys think of the the Tony Kathy reveal? I wasn't expecting that at all. I mean, it made sense, but it never even crossed my mind that she wasn't what she said she was. Yeah. Yeah, when he when he walked into the uh, coffee shop or Starbucks or whatever it was, and he saw her standing there in, like, sweatpants, I was just like, well, of course she wants to ignore you. She doesn't look professional. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't think it was... You know, she's a she's a college actress trying to do a job. I was like, when they explained that that she was an actor, I was like, why the hell are they hiring actors yeah. to rent out the rooms? Why don't they just get Oscar to do it? Yeah, and my theory was that they they because they it, it, it alludes to it like briefly that there was a uh, an experiment. Like, I'm not sure. Where I'm going, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like like the the building's doing something. They want to see what it does to people. So you know they have control room. Like when they first find out it's control room, and uh, Debbie says, "Well, it might just be the room that nothing's happening to nobody." And then you know, because each room's kind of different. Like uh, Veek's room is cold, and Nate's room has a black light. I know that doesn't have any psychological effects on somebody, but it'd be weird. Well, I mean, when he first moved in, it. It totally, he kept putting in different light bulbs and stuff. I mean, that probably would make you feel like you're going crazy. Like, yeah. I'm, the only, I'm not the only one that sees this as a black light, right? Like, I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, they squashed it really quick because they're like, nope, there's no test here. It's a machine. It, but, makes, yeah. you, it makes you second guess and go, why, why were they going through an actress? Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as they did that, I questioned Oscar. I thought, mm -hmm. is he an actor too? Because I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was all like, maybe he's fake. Yeah, <laughs> and I think maybe that was the setup: is they wanted you to start second guessing all the all the people, mm -hmm. even yeah. the people, even the people that were in the apartment complex prior to Nate. Yeah. Like I started thinking, like not directly thinking of it, but I started having in the back of my mind going, some of these people may also be fake, and thinking about that with like. Andrew because he was so weird mm -hmm. and Mrs. Knight because she's been there the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, people like people like Zila and Roger and Tim and Veek, I didn't think it about them. Uh just because they were just as excited to figure out what the hell was going on in the building as anybody else, but the weird people were And and the other thing that kind of made me think that was the whole Debbie and Clive relationship thing, like Debbie was very like 1950s housewife, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was all like, "That seems. I mean, sure, that can that, and it just turned out to be that's her personality. That's just who she is. But at the time, you're constantly thinking, why is she a 1950s housewife? That just feels really weird.' Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's very weird. Super weird. Speaking of Miss Knight, uh, what did you guys think when they opened up 14? Oh, she did. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I had just really thought to myself, I like her. She's a spitfire. She's, you know, 
she doesn't have problems speaking her mind because she's when old she, and you just have to let it happen. Right before that, when she's talking to Veek and she's oh. like, maybe we should listen to this colored girl. <laughs> she's a brown, brown girl. girl. Oh, the brown girl. Sorry. And yeah. she, everybody was all like, oh, and she's all like, what? I grew up in a different age. Yeah. And I was all like, oh, my curious. God. <laughs> That made me laugh so much. I was all like, holy crap. <laughs> Peter Khan slipping in a little uh, <laughs> under undercover racism. <laughs> yeah. It's very funny. But now it's a great book. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. Yeah. We did a good job. We did a good job. All right. So I think uh, I think that seems like a pretty comfortable place to wrap it up then. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, definitely, if you listen to this entire thing without reading the book first, why the heck Shame did you do you. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go go buy the book or buy the audio book and read it. And if if you get it in the audio book, make sure it's narrated by... Do you remember his name, Cappy? Uh, 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 Handsome McGee. I, uh, I, hope he just, I hope he doesn't listen to this part because I forgot to. <laughs> I forgot his name, but he's amazing. What is his name? I got it right here. Hang on. Okay. Where you at? Uh, uh, Ray Porter. There we go. Ray, Ray Porter. Porter. Uh, Thank that's you. That's right, because then I went out and found like a bunch of his books. I was like, I'm going to get all of his audio books because I just loved his voice and yeah. his narration. Yeah, he does a great job. Yeah. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. And... Yep. Uh, We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.